Welcome back to the channel. I am delighted to have today my buddy Jake Lee Guitar here with his amazing friend Andy checking out three, yes, three awesome Gordon Smith guitars. I am going to hand over now to Jake and to Andy to take you through the three amazing Gordon Smiths. This is my friend, Gordon Smith artist, Andy. Um, he's an unbelievable guitarist, bass player, songwriter, podcaster, and hilarious human being who loves animals. Ah. Oh, goodness. I, I that have was a, a lot to live up to now. That's... Pretty fitting introduction. Oh, goodness. If I was to list his notable work, we'd be here for an incredibly long time. So I just want to ask, um, who are you working with at the moment? What projects are you currently involved in? Um, I am a, a guitarist and bass player in Kurt Vile and Genesis fashion. I do switch between instruments. And you do it very well. Uh, thank you. Uh, with Ben Wood and the Bad Ideas. And uh, when I'm on six string duty, the Gordon Smiths come out. They do. And although you've been a Gordon Smith player for as long as I've known you mm. and since way before that, it was your involvement with Gordon, uh, with Ben Wood and the Bad Ideas that your relationship with Gordon Smith really started. So Absolutely. how did that happen? Something happened in early 2020, and that was the fact that Ben Wood and the Bad Ideas put out 12 singles in as many months, and that caught the, the attention of Gordon Smith. And being a, a British heritage band who have managed to remain intact and in business since the mid-70s, they favour British people who have gumption, have resilience and tenacity. And thankfully, and I still pinch myself at night, um, we were able to, to get support from them. And, and to be able to say that, uh, that as a band that we are Gordon Smith artists uh, means the world. But it really was the endeavour of, uh, of 12 singles. And you know, that's videos as well in as many months. <laughs> How many Gordon Smiths have you played? Um, I've had a, all joke inside, I've had a fair number uh, myself. Uh, my very first Gordon Smith that I owned was an ancient um, GS1 from the, the which early is, 80s, which is, yes, an earlier version of this. And um, the just the total simplicity of it, everything worked. It, it didn't have a, a, a lot of bells and whistles, neither does this, but thanks to the, the, the push-pull pot, you could, be able to get two usable sounds from the off and then you know dog forbid being able to use you know your volume control and tone knob the your sort of sonic palette uh, ended up ends up being a much uh, more varied than you could possibly imagine and that really got me hooked and just it just everything just works and there's a real beauty to the simplicity of it you know sort of just you know one hunk of wood one bridge one pickup one dodgy person playing it <laughs> How many have you got at the moment? Um, at the moment, uh, let's see, I have the GS1, which you see here. This lovely uh, double cutaway, uh, Jet Boy is the name of that model. Um, I also have, uh, uh, from the, the early 90s, a Gordon Smith Graph, which is a single cutaway beast uh, with an Evertune, which uh, was retrofitted. I believe the first Gordon Smith that's had one fitted. And uh, I also have a Battleship Grey, Gordon Smith Gypsy 12 string. <laughs> Of 
Gordon Smith and a British Gibson. What do you think about that? I think I'm sure you've heard that. Oh yeah, I've heard yeah. it absolutely. I think from a style point of view, particularly the early identity of Gordon Smith, you know, tended to be based around instruments like this. You know, this is their heritage model, and you know, without a doubt. You know, it is its own thing, and Gordon Smith have done their own slant on it. But you know, inherently, you know, you can see a very obvious Gibson uh, Les Paul um, Junior um, stroke melody maker um, design. Certainly, the and and those those two elements come together to uh, kind of create what guitar, a guitar player who's familiar with the brand when they think about Gordon Smith will probably think about this model. And uh, you know they they've added to their range significantly, um, but this is where it began, and without a doubt, this has a Gibson influence. But as a company, they are their own thing. M my first involvement with them prior to Auden being involved, uh, who took over in 2015, was when uh, John and uh, Linda Smith were running the company, and you know it was very much um, a, you know, a sawdust on the floor operation tiny number of people, tiny little workshop, making wonderful instruments. All very, very, very simple, all wonderful, all unique. since the Auden takeover, how do they compare to the old models? Um, yeah, so um, with, with Auden, they certainly seem to care a, a great deal more about, about you know, the stocks of wood that they use and just keeping everything down to one pieces for the bodies, one pieces for the necks. And um, even with the, the, the Telecaster-themed guitars, the, the classic T, it, it's you know, no more than a, a two-piece body. Um, and, um, but it's inherently, it feels like a Gordon Smith, the logo may have changed, it sounds like a Gordon Smith, but it feels just that little bit more solid. Not that the early ones didn't, but it just feels like a bit more time and attention's gone into it. And, and the finish is just a, a little bit more posh. <laughs> seems to be implying that wood makes a difference in tone. I don't know what that's about. Oh, goodness, yes. Is it Scott Grove that we were talking about? It was. He was talking about the fretboard, and uh, he had a guitar with inlays, and he was saying, you know, oh, do you hear that? I'm playing, I'm playing over this rosewood. Don't you hear how warm that is? Hear how warm that is. But then, oh no, I'm over the inlay. Oh, it's so cold, Sandy. Oh. And then he, he said that we were catarded, which isn't a very nice thing to say. I'm not a fan of that. But do not complain to us, complain to, to Mr. Grove. Definitely. Would you say there's a certain shape that you sort of associate with Gordon Smith? Yeah, very much. Because I have one in mind. Which and I just want to see if it's the same as A yours. sexy shape of me. It's definitely the GS1. The GS1. But yeah. considering they've got other like sort of quite iconic shapes like the graph. Mm. Um, but for me, it's always I, when somebody says Gordon Smith, I always think about the GS One. Indeed, which would be the uh, the the, the GS One, which is the, this this version, uh, which is a, a double cutaway, and then there's the the GS One Sixty, which is the single cutaway yeah. version. Both wonderful guitars, and um, yes, and and of course, the one thing which uh, the move to Auden did not change is the use of this, which is the brass nut, and um, yeah, inherently. In comparison to the Gibson counterparts, these are brighter sounding instruments. And the circuitry remains the same, where you have a, a no load option when everything's full up. And, oh, uh, I didn't know that. Mm. I like that. Yeah. And basically, which means that, you know, when you're, you know, <laughs> that's no load. And then if you bring the, oh, so that's in push. That's no load. And if you just bring the um, the tone knob from 10 to eight, you're then in the the same sonic territory that you would hear when 
a normal Gibson guitars on 10. So it takes a bit of the, the high end off of it. feel that Gordon Smith are kind of associated with a certain type of music mm. but I feel that recently it's kind of changed a little bit with the with a lot of the guitars that are coming out of the factory at the moment like recently there was an Evertune equipped um, factory model yes. and a, a pink um, single cutaway with a Floyd Rose mm. so it's definitely moving or, or expanding anyway absolutely um, who, who do you think a Gordon Smith is for I think it's changing. I think it's for anyone that wants to have a handmade instrument which you don't have to sell an organ. And by organ, I'm referring to bodily ones. That the people who are interested in in Gordon Smith, um, in the current guys, the with with Auden, it is changing. Um, there's you know a lot more you know rock and roll people um, before, and they're they're very proud of this. You know, there's the the whole being associated with with punk. And the early years of punk and bands like Buzzcocks, who you know, brandished early Gordon Smith models, um, there was there was kind of a link with um, you know the whole simple but wonderful nature of these instruments. In addition, with the Gatsby, um, which is um, an offset uh, bolt-on neck model, it's their most recent. It's the most recent to model, to yeah, that. absolutely. Which. Ben himself from Ben Wood and the Bad Ideas owns it's spectacular. It's if we were going to describe it, how would how would we is imagine offset? Yeah, it's offset with um, a slight Gibson influence. Imagine uh, a Fender Jazzmaster without all the mucky muck and two P90 pickups. And these are two P90 pickups that are hand wound, home cooked, if you will. At uh, Gordon Smith's do uh, Gordon Smith workshop. hand, hand well, they, wind they, they do indeed. Yes. Cool. So, like the the Gordon Smith name on, I think since 2016 or so, um, the Gordon Smith name is on the pickups, but they make the pickups and ditto with the the P90 pickup that you have here. Cool. So these are these are home home wound concerns. <laughs> For the price of something from Cortec in Indonesia or world music in Korea, you can get something that's pretty much custom shop quality, built to your exact specifications, for pretty much the same kind of price. Mm. Why why isn't Gordon Smith a bigger company? Do they want to expand or do they like sort of the, the kind of size they are at the moment? I think that in the, the the early days of the company and going to the, the changeover in, in 2015, John and Linda, who ran the concern in those days, I think they were happy just to have the market that they had. There's a video on YouTube in which the, the workshop is, is visited by a, a filmmaker. And I think this was made in 2011 or so. And in it, they make a joke about when asked about what's next and they say oh you know world domination and, and i think in in those days it, they were just happy to be a, a word of mouth brand and to produce things at a level that they could manage and at a, a quality that was very 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 high um and uh i believe with Auden, they want to expand it but not too much right. 
I mean, inherently, you don't see Gordon Smith adverts, you know, left, right and centre. And that's largely because they don't have to, have to advertise. You know, if, you, if you're <laughs> aware of the brand, it's because you know the brand. And the reason why you know the brand is you've come across someone that's played it or there's a band that you've seen who have brandished a Gordon Smith and they dig the sound. <laughs> Until to the, oh, this is the first time I've actually um, experienced the new. I've, I've tried out some of the pre ordered stuff before, mm. and that was always very good. But until today, I was a little bit skeptical. Mm. But how spo- dare spo- you? Spoiler alert: uh, we plugged in earlier on, and mm. I, I was, was so impressed. It's lovely. Yeah. It feels like a quality instrument. They felt like quality instruments before, but it does. It feels. It feels just a little bit more yeah. posh. It's kind of like, um, you know, like the best builder that you know in the best suit that you can possibly imagine. more as a bass player than a guitarist even though you're a brilliant guitarist thank you I thought you just knew me as a wonderful person what what about Gordon Smith and bass because I know previously they did something maybe but I have it on good authority not just good authority I've seen the photos they, they, they are going to be putting out a bass very 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 soon is this breaking news this is breaking news are we allowed to say this uh, we can as long as we don't show any pictures indeed, indeed. I mean basically Yes, I do have information. If they are going to be putting out a base, I've looked at it. I've looked at a photo of it. I've not actually held it. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. All that I will say is that we're entering into the, the arena of medium scale. 32 inches of brilliance. And a, a PJ configuration, possibly. Oh, well. And I'll say no more, but let's just say... Oh... I see. With maybe a GS1000 thrown in for good measure. So there we have it. What did you think of the three Gordon Smith guitars? I am very, very impressed with Gordon Smith guitars. I always have been, and I think I always will be. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the guitars. I love reading your comments, and I will do my best to respond to each of them. Okay, I'll be back with the best content I can, just as soon as I can, but in the meantime, you take good care.